Hi, friends. I'm going to read the classic Christmas story, The Night Before Christmas. Twas, here, I'll just give you a little view of the picture. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. You can tell by their clothing and furniture that this story takes place a long time ago. The children were all nestled, all snug in their bed, while visions of sugar plums danced in their head. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. You can see the children in their room and the parents in theirs. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. That's what they called the window back in those days. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below when what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With the little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. Oh my goodness, wouldn't it be so fun to see Santa and his reindeer outside on your lawn? More rapids than eagles, his coursers they came. Now he whispered and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Vixen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they met with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew with a single sleigh full of toys in St. Nicholas, too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. That's the stuff in a fireplace, right? A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held it tight in his teeth, and smoke and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. Now I can tell this is old because look at this old phonograph player. The person who wrote this story, it was at least a hundred years ago.
He spoke not a word, went straight to his work. He filled the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger on the side of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. And here's a little story about the person who wrote this. This was written in 19, or pardon me, 1809, so almost... Is that 200 years ago? Could the story be that old? It must be. Holy smokes. Hmm. Well, there you go. The man of the hour, Santa Claus.